Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we have some fair understanding of what an RC circuit is, let's take a look at the RL circuit. Of course, L stands for inductor, and here we have the equation that describes the voltage across the inductor with respect to time. So the voltage is equal to the inductance times the rate of change with respect to time of the current. When the time is equal to zero, there must be some initial current to the circuit, so we're going to just simply call it I sub dot. We'll use capital I for the constant fixed initial current, and I as a function of time will be the current after time equals zero. The initial energy on an inductor, because it's built up a magnetic field that stores the energy, it's equal to one half the size of the inductor times the initial current squared. So how do we come up with an equation that describes the current inside the circuit? Well, we're going to use this equation right here, and we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to use the KVL. We're going to sum up all the voltages around the circuit. So starting maybe at this point right here, now we're simply going to add the voltages around the circuit, which means that the voltage across the inductor plus the voltage across the resistor must equal to zero. If we go around the circuit in the opposite direction right here, notice we go from negative to positive, we go against the current, the assumed direction of the current, so we'll have a voltage rise across the resistor, and we'll have a voltage rise across the inductor the way it's labeled. So this means we're going to have L di dt plus the voltage rise across inductor using Ohm's law. We know that the current I equals V over R, which means that V is equal to I times R. We plug that in here. So we write I times R will be the voltage, the instantaneous voltage across the resistor, and that adds up to zero. Moving this to the right, dividing both sides by L, we get di dt is equal to minus R over L times the current I. And then separating the variables, we put the I over here and the T over there, we get the I over I is equal to minus R over L times DT. All right, I think now we're ready to integrate both sides. So let's integrate this side, let's integrate that side, which means that the natural log of I is equal to minus R over L times time, plus a constant of integration, let's call it A. We now take the antilog of both sides, which means we write E to the natural log of I equals E to the minus R over L times T plus A. Let's write it slightly different. We're going to break out the plus A here so we can write, and this of course, the exponential negates the natural log, so we get i as a function of time is equal to e to the a times e to the minus t over, if I bring the r down, I can write l divided by r. And there's a reason, of course, I did that, because that will become the time constant. Now, e to the a is simply another constant, so we'll write the current as a function of time is equal to b, let's call it b, times e to the minus t over L over R. And of course, here we're going to write that the time constant tau is simply L over R. In an inductive circuit, the time constant is L over R, where in a capacitive circuit, the time constant is R times C. Now we're going to place in here when t is equal to zero. I, when t is equal to zero, is equal to the initial current. I sub naught, which is equal to B e to the zero, because when we replace t with zero, we get e to the zero, and that's of course one, which means that b is simply the initial current in the circuit, which means we can write this as the current in the circuit as a function of time is equal to the initial current times e to the minus t over l divided by r, which is the time constant, or we can write i as a function of time is equal to the initial current times e to the minus t over tau. So these are the two forms of the equation, either using L and R or using the constant tau that describes current in an RC circuit as a function of time. And that's how it's done.